Hello, Tree Church kids. It's time for another exciting lesson. Today, we are going to be looking at the story of Mary, Jesus' mother. And we're going to be talking about being used by God in an extraordinary way. God wants to use each of us for his incredible plan. So get the family together. We're going to have a fun game today. We're going to work on memory verse, and we're going to go over a great Bible story. Guys, here we go. Today, we'll talk about God taking the ordinary and making it extraordinary. This is Mary. Mary was a nice girl from a small town. She wasn't rich or famous, just average. We would say Mary was just an ordinary girl. But Mary's story is far from ordinary. Mary was home alone when suddenly an angel appeared out of nowhere. Now that would be scary. But angels always calm people down by telling them not to be afraid because they were messengers from God. The angel told Mary that she would have a baby. Now Mary wasn't married and knew that was not possible. She just did not understand. The angel said, you will become pregnant by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the baby will be known as the Son of God. He will be a wonderful man, and he'll be the king of Jacob's people forever. His kingdom will never end. The angel reminded Mary that her cousin Elizabeth was six months pregnant, and no one believed that a woman that old could have a baby. <gasps> but nothing is impossible for God. So, he said, you will have this baby, and you will call him Jesus. Mary... This ordinary girl from a little town called Nazareth was about to become extraordinary. God had chosen her, and now the transformation was dependent on her. Would she be stressed out and worry? Would she run away and not agree to be a part? Would this ordinary girl really be a part of the most important plan God had ever made? You know the answer. With one decision, Mary went from ordinary to extraordinary. She looked at Gabriel and said, I serve the Lord. Let everything you say happen. God chose Mary and Mary agreed to obey. Ordinary to extraordinary in an instant. But it probably didn't feel as magical or special as it sounds now. Mary was going to have the Son of God as her child, yet she still had to go through painful childbirth. She had to explain to people why she was pregnant without a husband. And even her husband Joseph wouldn't understand at first. Then she would have to witness her son dying on a cross as a grown man. Being used by God isn't always easy, but it's always worth it. So what about you? Can God use you for extraordinary things? The answer is yes. He will choose you, but your decisions will finish the transformation. God wants to use you to change your school, to fix the problems in your home, to get people to follow him. No matter how ordinary you may think you are, God has an extraordinary plan for you. Be aware that God can use you in any situations and he will use you to do big and extraordinary things. Stay alert and be ready. The more you think about God and stay in his presence, the more you'll be able to recognize the moments when he needs you to react. Remember, you are extraordinary because you are a follower of Jesus. Here's three important tips to take home from today's lesson on God using us to do extraordinary things. Take one, be aware that God will use you to do big things. Take two, be ready to do what he asks. And take three, stay in God's presence by thinking about him all day long. We hope you have a great week and remember to treat others the way you want to be treated. 
because that's also a part of God's extraordinary plan for his kids. See you next week. I love Mary's reaction in today's story. She could have heard this shocking news. She could have got mad. She could have ran to her friends to gossip. She could have left town. She could have just uh, talked to everybody about it and said, you're not gonna believe this crazy thing that God asked me to do. And she could have just turned this into such a dramatic thing. But what did Mary do? Mary looked at it and went, God is asking me to do something. I'm gonna obey him. I'm gonna follow him. So different, I think, than some of the reactions that I have in my life. When, when things upset me, when things go wrong, instead of looking at those things and, and saying, what is God doing here? Is God trying to either maybe change me and change my heart, change the way I react to things? Or maybe he's trying to use me in someone else's life. Or maybe he has this huge, huge plan, like this huge plan that he had with Mary to come to earth and show us how to live. We just never know what God's doing, but we do know from reading his word that he wants to use us in that plan when we cooperate, when we obey, when we follow. And so Mary's reaction was so good, and God wants to use us every single day in extraordinary ways just like that. So let's go over the three takes that I gave you to help you know how to let God use you every single day. All right, so let's do take one. Repeat after me. Take one. Good. Be aware. Say that for me. Be aware. Say it. Be aware of what, Pastor Phil? Be aware that God will use you to do big things. So that just means be aware that God is working in your life every single day. So as you go through those things, it's not just the ordinary thing. Like you think, okay, I just, I get up and I get ready for school and I go to school and I do my work and I come home and I go to practice and I come home and I go to bed. And it just feels like what? we're going just through this circle of things. But God is in all of that and he's wanting you to uh, help other people. He's wanting you to grow yourself. He's doing so much at the same time every single day and he wants you to be a part of it. So be aware of that. And then when things happen, it won't just feel like something bad happened. Because you're aware, you'll go, what's God doing? I wonder what's happening there. God, show me how I can interact with you in this. Show me how you want me to feel right now. Show, you how me, show me how you want me to calm down. Or show me how you want me to reach out to somebody and, and say something and help them or do something for them. Just be aware. And that's a really good step in him using you every day. All right, let's do take number two. Repeat after me. Take two. Good. Be ready. All right, be ready for what, right? Be ready to do what he asks. So we talk all the time in church about talking to the Holy Spirit and then listening. That means the things that he, the thoughts that he gives you and the feelings that he gives you when you pray and when you're talking to him, those are him guiding you. Those are, that is his way of guiding you, of going, if you're, if all of a sudden you're, you're, you're praying and you're thinking about grandma and you all of a sudden feel like I should call grandma or I should text grandma or I should send grandma a picture and do that. Act on that. That is God going, I want you to reach out. I want you to be interactive in whatever it is you're praying to me about. So God will guide you. Be ready to do what he says. So when you have this feeling, well, I should do this. Or when you're, I think God speaks to us through the Holy Spirit a lot when we sin. So maybe you just lie to your mom and you just, all of a sudden you just start to feel so awful and you start to think I should tell mom the truth. I need to, to come clean on this and do the right thing right now so that God can work in this situation. And when you do that, if you actually do that and obey him, he will instantly be right there to guide you. Doesn't mean you won't have any trouble from it. It doesn't mean you won't get in trouble because you lied the first place. What it means is God will automatically start to work with you because you've asked for forgiveness now you're trying to do the right thing and god will show you what he wanted for you in the first place so be ready to do what he asks so we've done two be aware be aware that he wants to use you for things every day and then be ready to do what he asks let's do this third one here we go repeat after me take three good stay one word we're not even talking to your dog <laughs> stay stay where stay in god's presence what does that mean? That sounds so churchy, doesn't it? That sounds like something that I would say from the stage on Sunday morning. But then I always say, now I'm gonna tell you what that means in everyday words. Stay in his presence means talk to him all day long. Think about him all day long. 
Talk to the Holy Spirit when you're in trouble, when you're in a situation. Talk to him when you're happy, when something good happens. Talk to God. You don't just talk to your friends about all the bad stuff in your life. You talk about everything. You share your world. He wants to share your world with him. So when something good happens, then that's a perfect time to say, God, that was so cool. My friends and I just had so much fun. Thank you for that. Thank you that we got to go do that together. Thank you that we got to go go to the park today. God, thank you for all the blessings in my life, for my friends and for the fun we just had. And it reminds you that things aren't just humdrum every day over and over, but God is working in your life. He's blessing you. He's leading you. He's giving you friendships. All this stuff he's in. And sometimes the bad things happen and then you say, okay, God, what are you doing? It's those first two. You be aware and you be ready when he starts to show you, yeah, I want you to stop doing this. I want you to leave this situation or I want you to help this person. So stay in God's presence. So there's three key words to help you remember those. Be aware, be ready, and stay. Be aware he wants to use you. Be ready to do what he says when he asks and then stay in his presence the whole time by talking to him asking him what to do next, asking for his help, sharing his, your happiness with him, thanking him for your blessings, stay in his presence. It will change your life and he will use you exactly like he intends to. Guys, I love you. We'll see you for the next takes on the next lesson. But for now, get ready for a fun game. Here we go. with you here this week. We're going to review it and then we're going to do a couple of fun ways. So here we go. Ready? So let us boldly approach God's throne of grace. Then we will receive mercy. We will find grace to help us when we need it. Hebrews 4, 16. Good job, guys. All right, our first fun way is we are gonna do it as sheep. So here we go, ready? So let us boldly approach God's throne of grace. Bah, then we will receive mercy. Bah, we will find grace to help bah, us when we need it. Bah, Hebrews 4, 16, bah. Good job, guys. Our last fun way is we're gonna skip while doing the memory verse. Are you ready? Here we go. So let us boldly approach God's throne of grace. Then we will receive mercy. We will find grace to help us when we need it. Hebrews 4, 16. Good job, guys. Well, hello. It's time for a silly game with me, Professor Big Brains. Moogly moogly, I have been hard at work in the game laboratory, coming up with some fun and exciting things for your wonderful families to do. I call this game, The Wacky Picture Game! I took a picture from today's story and I added a few crazy mistakes. When I say ready, steady, Search. I will put the picture upon your little TV screen and you will have 30 seconds to find all the mistakes in the picture. Let's see who is the best at finding the things that are not quite right. Here we go. Ready, steady, search.
goodness. Time is up. Let's see how you did. There were ten things wrong in today's picture. Did you find them all? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and finally number ten. I love spending time with you, but for now, I must go. Remember, be kind to each other. Goodbye, my families. What a great time we've had today. Guys, remember that God wants to use you every single day for his extraordinary plan. Let's pray. God, thank you so much that you want to use us, that you want to take just our ordinary lives and turn them into something special as we follow you and obey you. But God, we need help with that. We can't do it on our own. So we just ask you, God, to guide us. Help us to hear your Holy Spirit. Help us to want to please you. I pray that for these children and for these families, that they want to follow you. They desire to live a life that is blessed by you and led by you. God, use us however you need to use us. We love you so much. We pray all these things in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says, amen. Guys, have a great week, and we'll see you next week. Hugs and blessings.